prayed that for me. Put on the whole armor of God. What do you do with armor? I said, what do you do with armor? To fight. He's saying, get ready for battle. Ready for battle. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, strategies and devices of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in where? Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, not some of the armor. Not many of the armor, not most of the armor, but how many? Somebody shout all. The Lord will give you wisdom in Jesus' name. Verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins got about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I will come back to that passage. We look at three points. Number one, the certainty of warfare and the battle of life. The certainty is definite. Oh, somebody say, well, I have crossed the line. It doesn't matter at what stage of your life. You will fight one battle or the other. The certainty. Point number two. The certified weapons for warfare and the battle of life. There are weapons that are certified. There are weapons that are approved. There are weapons that are real, genuine, original. And there are weapons that are fake weapons. Untested weapons. But we're talking about certified ones. The ones that are certified and approved by the power of the Holy Ghost. The one that is, that, 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 that is founded in the name of the Lord. Point number three. Coronated winners of warfare and the battle of life. Coronated. We're talking about winners. Honorable, dignified people. Let's come back to point one. Somebody remind me point one. The certainty of warfare and the battle of life. Come back to that Job where we read. Now, Job was a wise man and a man full of understanding. Job was a man that had direct connection with God. The book of Job actually happened about the time of the book of Genesis. Don't worry about the positioning in the Bible. And Job, from experience and by revelation, is making us to know that man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. He had his own share of it. Abraham had his own share of the trouble. And whoever you are, you have your own share. The apostles have their own share. Jesus did also. So get ready for battle. It's better you are prepared than not being prepared. Because it will come. According to the dictionary... When we use the word battle, it is a military conflict between two or more armed forces that are well defined in duration, defined in area, defined in force commitment. They know what they are up to. And in the world today, you look at the armaments of the various nations. You can tell that the United States has the most armory. 
with weapons in those armories. And then you go from the United States, the next one is Russia. And you look at United States and Russia, they are always at loggerhead. Competition is always there. God forbid any outbreak of war. And I can tell you the only reason, in my own opinion, why they have not really gone into war is because of the fear of, who can tell me? The nuclear weapon. Because with the nuclear weapon, you can just press the button and then everything is over. And that's why they're concerned about some nations of the world, like Iran, building their own nuclear weapon. Because those people can just wake up one day and say, we are mad with America. And they press the button. That is why, and I don't know if you follow the news, in the last regime, the last government in the United States, the latter part of it, there was fear all over the nation because there was a briefcase that <laughs> they carry along with the president. That thing carries the secret code. And some were concerned, if this man gets mad and um, changes his mind, that I lose election, you all lose your life. So everybody became very careful what they do and what they don't do. Praise the Lord. All these are to tell you there are all kinds of weapons out there. The devil has his own weapon. It's not like all these earthly weapons we talk about. Of course, he can use them. He can use anybody to, to ignite any of those things. That's why we all must be prepared. But beyond that, on daily basis, he's attacking every humanity. And the moment you know that you are in the battlefield, the better for you because you know how to protect yourself. You know how to be vigilant and watchful and how to pray. And I have the good news for you. God is on your side. I said God is on your side. That is battle. Battle is something you know what you have. You know your enemy. Your enemy knows you. You know where you are going to fight. You know when you are going to fight. You know how you are going to fight, of course. Who determines the end of the battle? It's God. The Bible says that the heart, the horse is prepared for the day of battle. But safety is of the Lord. Victory is of the Lord. So you that is getting the horse ready, don't rejoice as the one that is dismantling everything. Come now to warfare. Warfare is slightly different from battle. And yet they are all together. Warfare is an intense armed conflict as well between the militaries of the world, the governments of the world, the nations of the world, parties in the world, characterized by extreme violence, aggression, destruction, and mortality that stretches, pay attention, for many months and many a times years. Since 2001 till now, how many years? Somebody help me. This year will make it 20 years. America has been involved in a battle in Afghanistan. Have they won the battle? No. Because it's a warfare. Sometimes in warfare, you know, in battle, you know your enemy, the enemy knows you. This one, you know your enemy, but you don't, you don't know all your enemy. 
America went there with their uniform. Most of the people they are fighting, they are in mufti. Amen? The person walking side by side with you, you don't know he's an enemy. And the worst of them is guerrilla warfare. That's exactly the way they operate. You don't see the enemy, you don't know the enemy, and yet the enemy is there. Now, look at this. Warfare. United States has been in that country now for 20 years this year. 19, by September 11, it will be exactly 20 years. Pay attention here. They watch over the borders. They watch over the ports, the airport, the seaport, the land port, air, all the ports. And yet, weapons are being ported in. From where are they coming? Because the way this thing happens, is unimaginable. I'm trying to use physical things to explain spiritual things to you. So that you don't sit idle thinking that all is well when in reality your life is in danger. The Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. Amen. The enemy is at war. Every man born of woman must fight the bas this battle. And I tell you, it's not optional. Paul the Apostle tells us in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Can you see? Many doors of blessing, doors of opportunity, doors of progress are open. And you can see the door and say, Hooray! I'm going through. And yet, just before you cross over, the adversary comes and crosses your way. Says, great door, great door. Many of you are not supposed to be where you are today. You're supposed to have advanced further down, but the enemy is always there. The Lord will give you victory in Jesus' name. In First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1, at the peak of peace in Israel, joy and progress in Israel, after David had conquered this nation, conquered that nation, conquered that nation, and he felt, oh yes, praise God, I'm very fine. The Bible tells us in that passage, it says, and Satan stood up against Israel. May the Lord destroy all, every upstanding of the enemy against you. Every upstanding of the enemy against your family. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. The goal was to destroy the whole land. That David, if in the physical battle of life, you will not lose. Because God is working with you. I will make you to walk against God so that God can walk against you. That is the strategy of the enemy. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give us what? To give us the what? Good news. Somebody say good news. And life more abundant. Abundantly. Abundantly. Amen. Paul the Apostle said, <laughs> in the work of the ministry, everything seems to be going fine, but he got to a point. Every effort he made were met with obstacles, with obstructions, with hindrances, with problems. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 18, he said, Wherefore we would have come unto you. Even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Can you see the battle now? Now, you say, Well, the devil is after the sinners. No, it's not just after the sinners, it's after the saints as well. 
You say the devil is after the poor. It's not just about the poor. He's after the rich also. Did you read in the news a few days ago? One of the richest men in the world. One of those, the richest people in the world. That you think they have everything they need. In billions for many years, he was the number one person in the world. Now, the divorce. What do you think that is? Warfare. Somebody say warfare. So, that tells you that money is not everything. You have been thinking, oh, if only I have had money. It's not all about money. You are single. If only I can be married. No, it's not just about marriage. Don't you see people that thought, well, because I'm not married, that's why I'm into pornography. And after marriage, they are still in pornography. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. This warfare we are talking about comes in different and diverse ways. Don't take it lightly. I will give you some of them. There is no way I can tell you everything because I don't know what is going on in your life, in your family. I'll just give you an idea. So that when you see the handwriting on the wall, you know this is warfare, and then you know what to do. Amen? When you see a consistent hindrances and obstacles on your way, consistent delays and disappointments in your life, warfare. Sicknesses and diseases one after the other, one after the other, warfare. Matrimonial crisis that you're wondering, why are all this happening? Warfare. Unexplainable rebellion of children in the family. Warfare. Spiritual instability and upheaval. Warfare. Ministerial predicament. I told you about Paul. Warfare. In the ministry, you do everything that you needed to do, and yet there is no growth. You fasted, you prayed, you sought the law, you did everything, and then there is no gift. You went back to the Bible and say, the Bible say, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every part of the enemy, and nothing shall be. Nothing happened. Warfare. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they cast out devil. Instead of you casting out devil, it's devil and demon following you. Warfare. 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 You get into a church in spite of all the preachings and the teachings of the word of God. And the seminars and the, and the workshops and everything. There is disagreement. People that are supposed to be holy and righteous. Shining as light in the world. Warfare. Because somebody somewhere somehow has not allowed the work of God to be perfected in his or her life. Warfare. How about you are made the leader and you need the cooperation and the support of everybody and then there are opposition. Do you know there are envy and jealousy in the church? Do you know that? That what you are doing, somebody wish they are the one doing it. Where you are, somebody wish they are the ones that are there. War, fear, war, fear, war, fear. There are people that come to church. You think they are saints, but they are revenue wolves in sheep's clothing. And they create problem for you. War, fear, war, fear. The Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. How about people in the church that act holier than you are? Anything you do, the way they, the way they, the, 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 the way they, they, they do their hair, the way they put their face together, and when they want to talk, they don't talk normal. They talk as if they have been to the third heaven and come back. And yet, inside of them is full of wickedness. Warfare. 
what fear not to them, but you that is wanting to do the best that you know to do. They are obstacles and obstructions in your life. How about communication breakdown? In the family, communication breakdown. In the nation, communication breakdown. In the church, communication breakdown. Everywhere. It's a warfare. Don't just look at the other person as the problem. Look at the spirit and the power behind it. Behind it. Husband and wife, think less of your spouse being your problem. There is a force behind what is going on. Haven't you seen people that are married? I'm talking about warfare. Married. No issue, no problem before wedding. After wedding, the woman couldn't check in. And then went for medical checkup. They checked everything from A to Z. And they said, you are fine, we can't see anything. And then they checked the man from A to Z. They couldn't find anything. And yet, infertilities in the family were fair. Were fair. Loss of job. And I'm telling you things that are real, not things that I'm making up. A lot of all this, I've had to deal with them in the lives of people. And some of them in my own life. Amen? Because we're all in it together. Somebody will get a job. I'm talking about real life story. As soon as he begins to put money together and begin to say, oh, this is the reward of my labor. That job is gone. And we become jobless until the last cent is spent. Before she could get another one. She may do that one for three months. And then it's gone again. And until the last cent is spent up. Well, up here. Have you not seen people, they go here, there are people against them. They quit that job, they go there, there are people against them. It's time for you to stop blaming the people who look inward. And say, Lord, whatsoever spirit that is following me wherever I go, I bind and cast them out in Jesus' name. Because they didn't know you before they hired you. They wanted it to be a blessing to them. But as soon as you got there, something you didn't see, something you didn't know showed up. Evil representation. You think you are you, but another figure is showing up representing you before them. And they said, no, we cannot tolerate this kind of a person. You had a good intention, but by the time you opened your mouth to speak, you began to speak <laughs> rubbish. And your boss said, okay, miss or mister, thank you so much. Warfare. Victory is coming in Jesus' name. You have labored and labored on your children. You labor by your life by your behavior, by your action, by your teaching, by your preaching, by your prayer, by your guidance, by your spending. Everything you knew to do, you did it. And yet, these kids are not born again. You think it's ordinary? That is another spirit. The Lord will give us victory over them all in Jesus' name. That's why I'm telling you, prepare for battle. Prepare for battle. Prepare for battle. I get to the second point. How do we fight this battle? Because if you are in a race or you are spotting, in order to win, you must play or run lawfully. Certified weapons for warfare. There are approved 
as well as unapproved weapons of war. And many a times, many of us have used the wrong weapons for the battle. And the outcome has been disastrous. The Lord will give us the right wisdom and the knowledge we will need in Jesus' name. You don't fight spiritual battle with carnal weapons. The Bible says that for the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God, not through you, not through your experience, not through your ability, not through your power, but through God, through God, through God. Earlier this morning, I was listening to the Bible, and the Bible talks about a mighty nation, a mighty army came to besiege a small city with all their military might, and yet there was just one man in that small city who disarmed the military with wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. With all thy getting, get wisdom. And the Bible says, get understanding also. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Only spiritually approved weapons will guarantee our victory. Because we are warring not against flesh and blood. Yes, those things come in the physical. Sometimes they appear normal. But in reality, they are spiritual battle. We war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual wickedness in high places. Second Corinthians chapter 10, looking at it from verse 3, it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Don't war according to the flesh. Don't walk according to the flesh. So then, what are these approved weapons that we need to use? I'll run through them because of my time. Number one is watchfulness and prayerfulness. Watch and pray. Matthew 26, 41. Number two, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, be spiritually inclined. Be able to sense from your spirit mind. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh lost set against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. I need an amen. How do we fight this battle? Look up. Many of us, the way we fight is praying and praying and praying. Prayer is good. But please balance it up. The Bible says faith without work is dead. Most prayers are not answered because they are not prayed scripturally. Those prayers are not lining up with purity of heart, with holiness and righteousness. You are praying unto God, but there is bitterness in your heart. You are praying in your heart, but there is anger against your fellow brother and your fellow sister. Galatians chapter 5. Looking at it from verse 22. The Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance, 
against such there is no law. Against such there is what? There is no law. It says unto us, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, do what? Let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. The Lord is speaking to us. Because he wants to give us victory in every area of our life. I told you from the beginning, whether you like it or not, the battle will come. The warfare will come. You have to fight. You have to fight. And we'll be told by the word of God that from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And tell me now, only the violent will take it by force. Do I tell you something? To get your victory is going to be by force. To get your promotion is going to be by force. To succeed as a Christian is going to be by force. It's not going to be just by jolly, jolly life of enjoyment. It's not going to be by just saying, oh, praise the Lord, brother. Oh, praise the Lord, sister. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Yeah, he's good. You are right. You are very correct. Hmm. But the battle is raging. God will be good to those that know their rights and do it. And do it. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. What kind of fruit are you bearing? Remember, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Do you love your fellow brother, your fellow sister? The good and the great thing you desire for yourself, do you desire for them? Or are you looking for the opportunity to backstab? Uh, how do they call it now in soccer? Where, and, then, uh, and, and then you slide them. So they can fall and then you get their place. Or even if you don't get it, so you can rejoice over them and say, huh? even though I didn't get it, I'm glad that you missed it. Is that who you are? Joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord. Anything you do that is not bringing joy to God will not help you in your life. Joy. Are you happy at the progress of your fellow brother or fellow sister? Peace. Be at peace with all men. Just look up here. When it comes to peace, let me explain this. You can only speak for yourself, you can speak for your neighbor. But yourself do everything within your power to be at peace with all men. If there is an odd go between you and the person, deal with it and move on. And if your sister, your brother say, I'm sorry, so let it be. Let bygone be bygone. Accept the apology. You don't turn around and say, God save your head that you apologize. That's not the spirit of meekness. That's not the spirit of love. Even if your brother is wrong and has wronged you, your goal is not for the destruction of that individual. 
But you know, when you don't forgive, you know what is happening? You are hurting yourself, you are working against your own forgiveness too. You are hindering your own prayer. And so you keep on praying. And you pray and you pray and you pray and then you add a person to your prayer. And what does God do? Somebody say something. Whatever you say, I, I can't hear you. Why? That is the Bible. Psalm 66, verse 16. If I regard iniquity in my heart, it is when you hear someone that you answer them. We are moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. So, please, for goodness sake, Learn to suffer long. These are approved weapons. Be gentle. Be gentle. Don't be rash. Be gentle. And then learn to do good to all men. What did I say? Learn to do what? Listen, 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 listen. It is the good you do to others that will come back to you. Am I communicating? It is the good you do to others. It may not be now. It may be later in life. And I share this with you. This is a testimony to God's glory. Some years back, here in Washington, we started a location in one part of town. And then I sent somebody there as the pastor. And the fellowship was going on. And there was a brother there in that location who was into business. I think he quit his job and he started his own business. And it got to a point that everything just went So he needed money. How much? $2,600. Amen? That will tell you how big the business was. Amen? Just to turn things around. And then he spoke with the pastor, and the pastor spoke with me. And I said, yeah. Let's help him out. That's what the church should be. We should be there for one another. Amen? And then when it was time, things now began to turn around. So he now wanted to pay back. I said, no, that is our own investment into your business. It's a gift. It's not a loan. Take care of it. And God turned things around. Just like God will turn your life around. Just like God will turn your situation around. Amen? What a long story short, many years back. Everybody forgot about it. And all of a sudden, he showed up, I think about three weeks ago or so, with a brand new 2021 Land Cruiser. $90,000 vehicle as a gift. And he said, Pastor, if I had not gotten, how much was it? Can you see? The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, what will happen? You'll have it back. And he said, if I had not gotten that money at that time, that would have been the end of my life. The end of the business and everything. It was a small thing. But that little seed, God breathed on it. Multiplied it. To the point that now the same person will afford to give that much. For goodness sake, be a blessing to somebody. Talk to someone and say, be a blessing. And the Lord will bless you. Now, the challenge is I can tell you there are a lot of people we've had that I have had personally. If I tell you how many, I have used my personal credit card either to pay their school fees or to do this or to do that, and at the end of the day, it's alone the same. But at the end of the day, if I don't want my credit and my life to be ruined in America, 
I had to pay everything myself. I'm, I'm talking of in thousands. Now, if I say because of those people now, this one is in need, and then I close my eye. Listen. If you close your eyes that a bad person will pass away, by the time a good person is passing, you will never see. Am I communicating, please? Maybe God is planning to bless you in the future, and then there is this temptation on your way, and you yield that to the temptation, you hinder your blessing in the future. So please, no matter what anybody has done to you, don't give up because of that. Don't give in because of that. Don't behave because of that. That may be just a temptation. A temptation. A temptation. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Always think, I will tell you this is my prayer. I, 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 have, I must have told you before. Because this is my life. That Lord, help me to be a blessing to my generation. And you know, because if you are walking with one leg, you are hopping, right? But when you have two legs, are you able to walk well? Amen? So I balance the prayer. What's the first prayer? Somebody, somebody didn't hear you. Can you say it again? Help me to be a blessing to my generation. So I balance up there. Oh God, make my generation a blessing to me. Amen. So that as I'm blessing, they are blessing me too. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same measure that you made, it shall be measured unto you also. The scripture cannot be broken. Amen? Some of you are the ones working against your own blessing. It's not the devil. It's not the witch. It's not the wizard. Come back to the scripture. Let my enemy die. That is not the kind of prayer we should pray. Amen? Let my enemy live so that they will see. The glory of God, the greatness of God, the power of God in my life and through my life. You pray, oh Lord, can I speak a grammar here? Freedom to speak. This is America, right? You pray, oh Lord, bless me, nyafu nyafu. Amen. You won't find that one in the dictionary anyway. Praise the Lord. That means bless me immensely. Yep, yep, I don't know the language. Praise God. So don't ask me which language is that. Bless me. Listen, listen, listen. I'm quoting the scripture. He said unto Abraham, he said, in blessing, help me here. I will bless you. And in such a way that through you, the families of the earth will be blessed. Amen? You shall be well with somebody here. Don't war against yourself. The Bible says there is he that holdeth more than is necessary and he tended to poverty. You will not be poor. But there is another one that is scattering. And yet it's increasing more. The liberal show so shall be made far. Somebody is about to be blessed. Somebody's story is about to change. Amen. Amen. The devil doesn't want it to happen. That is a battle. But you will overcome. In the name of the Lord. So walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk by faith, walk by faith. Be meek. Be temperate in all that you do. 
Walk in wisdom. That's the next thing. Walk in wisdom. Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6, walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Wisdom to communicate. Wisdom to communicate. Wisdom to talk. Brother, wisdom to communicate. Sister, wisdom to communicate. Children, wisdom to communicate. Wisdom. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Be, but sanctify the Lord in your heart. Sanctify the Lord in your heart. Honor the Lord in your heart. In your life. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Amen. Number four, wait on God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle, as eagle. Not like eagle, but as eagle. You are an eagle, you will soar high. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Number five, walk by faith. Walk by faith. It says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. A lot of things will happen that will make it look like all hope is gone. No, hold on to God. He never failed. He never failed. At the age of mighty, Sarah was blessed. At an old age, Rebecca was blessed. Whatever your expectation, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, there will be a little delay to test your faith. But as you hold on to the Lord, it will make ways for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Third point, coronated winners. Of war peace and the battle of life. Coronated winners. Celebrated winners. Celebrated winners. Who are those winners I'm talking about? I'm one of them. Heaven will celebrate me. Heaven will celebrate you in Jesus' name. Engagement in the warfare of life does not automatically guarantee victory that you are in a battle doesn't mean you, you, you have won already. It takes fighting lawfully and fighting till the end. Lawfully, lawfully, mark that word, fight lawfully. And fight till the end. And then the victory will come in Jesus' name. Fight with the word of God. Fight in the name of the Lord. Fight with the power of the Lord. Fight in holiness, with righteousness, uprightness. And when we say fight, you are not confronting anybody. You just, listen, the Bible says, if God be for us, this is the battle now. If God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Let me tell you how to fight again. The Bible says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Is that something physical? Is that something you want to go and buy from the store? No. That is the authority. The, you already guaranteed success. Victory, triumph. If your life can just be right with God, that's why I pity people that are always chasing after witches and wizards. People that are going from one pastor to the other for prayers. I pity them. People that they have this prayer line, they join that prayer line. There is nothing wrong with prayer, praise the Lord. There is another one, they join that prayer line. 
when they hear this pastor, uh, he's a miracle worker, they run there. There is a priest that is uh, sprinkling, sprinkling water on the people. They go there. The other one wants to, wants to just move his hands like this, all of them fall down. They go there. When will you stop running up and down? When will you trust God for yourself? When will you believe God for his promises? When will you be a man and a woman? Hold him up to the Lord. In all things, for all things and through all things. God will give you the grace in Jesus' name. 2 Timothy 2 5 says, If a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lovefully. Lovefully, lovefully, lovefully. You know, if I want crowd to come, I will just, I know what they do out there to pull crowd, but are they preparing them for heaven? No. No. And please understand, I might say, don't come to me for prayer. No. And I've said this so many times here. If you, if you are praying on your own, not that you are the type that is going from prophet to prophet and priest to priest and pastor to pastor, from church to church. Today is only oil they give you. Tomorrow is anointed oil they give you. The other day is granite oil they give you. ago, there is somebody who's supposed to be a Christian. I don't know where she got the oil. Everything in the house. Anointed. Anointed. If you are not anointed, what is going to anoint the oil you are carrying? Amen? It is well. It is well. Let's look at these crowns. Coronated. When we're talking about coronated, we're talking about crowning. We're talking about winning, triumphing, excelling. You will receive the crown of life. You find that in James 1.12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised them that love him. It's not something that is going to be promised. It's already promised. It's your inheritance already. The crown of life. Number two, the incorruptible crown. Incorruptible crown. Here on earth, you are elevated. Somebody just went to bed. First Corinthians 9.25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. You want more crowns? The crown of glory. The crown of glory. Let me tell you how that works. When you have this crown of glory, anything you decree will be established. Anything you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Everything you lose on earth is lost in heaven. The devils and the demons will flee from you. Amen? The crown of glory. First Peter 5.4 